ah, grabe ya, itong sa PE ganina, uy, gabigdagan. Ray, lahit naman na akong gibati. Sakit na kaya akong dugan. Ito na ako sa ER. Sige, lahit na ni. Ah. Dok. Uy, sir. Tabang ko, bi. Kaya mo rin. Sige, kaya akong dugan. Ah, sige, sir. Lingkod sa dire, sir. O, lingkod sa, sir. Mga tanong lang ko, sir. Ano sa'yo? Pangalan niyo, sir. O kaya, ma, just what? Ilay, dead na to, sir? 25. So, ano sa'yo? May problema na ito rin, sir. Sakit akong dugan. Naglisip ko ginawa. Dire sa ako ang left. Sakit tayo. Ano sa'yo? Manakaw lang sana yung sugod na, sir. Naroon lang na ako. Ganiya pa na. Ganina pa na eh. Kay, ni Dagan man may ato sa PE ba? Ah, sige, sir. Dire ta sa bed, sir. Para makuha niyo naman ko ito sa size niya. Padayo na ito itong assessment. Okay, sir. Dere ta, sir. Sige, salamat. Ah, sige, sir. Dere ta, sir. Uh, Mr. Go, mamaliyog ko na. I-attach na ito itong cardiac monitor. Mamaliyog. Sige, team leader. I-attach na ako cardiac monitor. Mamaliyog ko na ito. Attach ko ito sa post of simeter, please. Sir, ang mutang ko sa mukha mo, sir, ha? Para makita na mo yung mga, sir, ha? Post-post situation, sir. So, i-attach na ako ang cardiac monitor, sir, ha? Abriana ito yung salina. I-attach na ako na yung mga electrodes. This is Jester and I'm going to introduce and explain to you how to use the cardiac monitor. What is a cardiac monitor? The cardiac monitor by definition is a device that shows the electrical and pressure waveforms of the cardiovascular system. It is used for measurement and treatment. What is the purpose of a cardiac monitor? The cardiac monitor the continuously display the cardiac electrocardiogram tracing. Additional monitoring components allow cardiovascular pressure and cardiac output to be monitored in display as required by patient diagnosis and treatment. Oxygen saturation of the arterial blood can also be monitored continuously. Most commonly used in emergency rooms in critical care areas, bedside monitors can be interconnected to allow a continual observation for several patients. Continuous cardiovascular and pulmonary monitoring allows a prompt identification and initiation of treatment. In general, the cardiac monitor provides a visual display of many patient parameters. It can be set to a sounded alarm if any parameters changes outside of the expected range that determined by the physician. Parameters can be monitored may include but not limited to electrocardiogram, non-invasive blood pressure, intravascular pressures, cardiac output, arterial blood oxygen saturation, and blood temperature. So what are the following equipment required for continuous cardiac monitoring? So it includes cardiac monitor, cables, and disposable supplies such as electrode patches, pressure transducers, a pulmonary artery catheter or a swan gans catheter, and an arterial blood saturation probe. As the cardiac monitor is most commonly used to monitor the electrical activity of the heart, the patient can expect the following preparations. The site selected for electro placement on the skin will be shaved and cleaned causing surface abrasion for better contact between the skin and electrode. The electrode will have a layer of gel protected by a film, which is removed prior to placing the electrode to the skin. Electrode patches will be placed near on the right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg, and in the center of the left side of the chest. If non-invasive blood pressure is being measured, a blood pressure cuff will be placed around the patient's arm or leg. And lastly, the arterial blood saturation probe will be placed on the finger, toe, ear, or nasal septum of the patient. Next is the aftercare and the following nursing responsibilities that we need to take note. And that is the end of our explanation on how to use the cardiac monitor. Hope you learned a lot and thank you for listening. Hello, today I will be going to demonstrate on how to properly use the pulse oximeter. This is a pulse oximeter. It reads your oxygen level and your heart rate. It simply put it on your finger. SpO2 96, heart rate 104. How does it work? Inside of the pulse oximeter, it have light emitting diode on both sides. In order to be accurate, the reading of the photo receiver, remove all the possible blockage of the light. Remove the nail polish for the female patient. The device emits red light and NV. 
infrared light. Infrared light absorbed by the hemoglobin with oxygen, while the red light absorbed by the deoxygenated hemoglobin. The device now will automatically calculate it. That's how we can get the oxygen saturation. So, Mr. Go, kung sa atong results, atong vital signs, kaya So, atong heart rate kay 58, atong RR is 14, and temperature is 37. Tung BP is 140 over 110, then auto is 90%. Thank you. Okay, so murag baba atong auto, no? So, Mr. Mangas, mamaliyo ko mag-start a uh, glow flow lang sana oxygen, please, by uh, nasal cannula, please. Sir, yeah. mag-administer ko ko na sa oxygen by uh, nasal cannula, sir, mag-utang ko siya mamilong sa ha. So, these are the different ways for oxygen therapy to be administered. First is the nasal cannula. It is recommended for most patients with type 1 and 2 respiratory failure. It is a hollow tube with two prongs which is inserted into the nostrils. It is secured in place by taping it behind the ears. The other end of the tube is connected to an oxygen tubing which then attaches to the oxygen cylinder normally placed on a wall. You can control the flow rate using a flow meter. The design may vary between hospitals. The advantages of a nasal cannula is that it can deliver flow rate of 2 to 6 liters per minute with approximately 24 to 50% FiO2. It is comfortable, it is easily tolerated, the patient can eat and speak easily and the patient is not rebreathing their own exhaled air and most of all it is cheap however the nasal cannula can be easily dislodged and the effectiveness depends on the patient's breathing since the patient can still breathe through their mouth which alters their FiO2 an alternative to a nasal cannula would be a simple face mask. A simple face mask may be less comfortable for the patient, however, it can deliver slightly higher levels of oxygen. The oxygen tubing is connected to the plastic port just below the mask. The open side ports allows air to mix and dilute the oxygen while also allowing carbon dioxide to leave the face mask. The face mask can be easily molded to the patient's face and then secured by an elastic band behind the patient's head. The flow rate of a simple face mask should be adjusted to 5 to 10 liters per minute depending on target saturation. However, exact oxygen delivery is difficult to know when using a simple face mask. If a specific concentration is needed to be delivered, a Venturi mask might be a better option for the patient. The third method to deliver oxygen is through a Venturi face mask. It is used when a specific concentration of oxygen is to be delivered and or when the patient continues to deteriorate. This uses these special adapters that varies in diameter flow in order to achieve a specific FiO2. They range from 24 to 60% and are of different colors. The oxygen is connected in a similar way as the simple face mask. These are the most commonly used in situations where patients may or have COPD and other risk factors for type 2 respiratory failure. The aim for oxygen saturation is around 88 to 92%. The fourth oxygen delivery method is through a non-rebreather face mask. It is used when the patient continues to deteriorate or has arrived in a critical condition. This has an attached reservoir bag and one-way valve which allows oxygen concentration of around 60 to 80 percent. The valve between the face mask and the reservoir bag needs to be pressed in order to fill the bag. It is indicated for patients that needs 
High concentration of oxygen. Ordered flow rate is between 12 to 15 liters per minute. Ako pa butang sir, comfortable uh, mga sir no, tapos nakakay ma-feel ma na murag intake sa hangin sir or masigla sir ba kay kung wala sir, ato ang tarungon sir ba? Na, nakakay ma-feel. Ma ah, sige sir, sige sir. Okay, cause we hope I wish that you could show some love instead of hate.